the Aggies, again, were not great last year. You mentioned their dual threat at quarterback. Um, what else does Utah State pose as a challenge to, uh, let's start with Iowa's offense. What does Utah State do defensively that you think Iowa is looking at at this point in the week? You know, I think they, uh, first off, they only have nine returning starters on offense, five on defense. Uh, but understand this, 53 newcomers to the program. 23 of those are high school kids, but that leaves 10 four-year transfers transfers from four-year schools, 20 junior college players. So there's a lot of people that are going to be playing against us on Saturday, and we don't even know much about them, if anything. Um, so uh, you talk about a competitive situation. There are a lot of jobs up for grabs, and some of those guys, I'm sure, those 30 older players – that have come out of junior college or other four-year schools are going to figure in in a major way. Um, they do, they're do. they picked eighth in the conference uh, out of 12 teams. But what you got to realize, there's some pretty good names in in that league. Uh, you got people like Boise and San Diego State, not to mention uh, – San Jose State, who looked – who scored some points on USC over the weekend. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and the teams behind them in the rankings are UNLV, Hawaii – what what happened with Hawaii and Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt ended up winning. Close one, but Vanderbilt pulled yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. So and then Nevada, uh, Nevada's listed 11th in the league. Well, you know we played Nevada just a year ago. It's a it's a stiffer test than Nevada, you might say. Then last but not least, New Mexico. Here's the thing that surprised me because I knew they were six and seven last year. They're one of those teams that didn't have a winning season. What I didn't realize at the time, the year before they were 11 and three. Right, uh, And that coach, incidentally, that coach has got a history of being successful. Uh, six years as the head coach at Arkansas State. He was the head coach for seven years, the last six of which, six consecutive winning seasons, six consecutive bowl games, uh, and then 11 games in year one just two years ago at, at Utah State. Uh, incidentally, he was voted as the, the – uh, Region 5 AFCA Coach of the Year. That's a distinct honor. There aren't that many regions in the country. And to do it at the FBS level is a big deal. To do it at any level is a big deal. Uh, and then last but not least, he was not the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach a year ago. But as a result of the disappointing season last year, he has assumed those duties. Those are duties he had at Arkansas State, uh, duties he's had in the past. He is more than capable of coaching quarterbacks and coordinating an offense. I know you would argue that's a lot for a head coach to do, but he certainly wasn't satisfied with the way it was done a year ago. So his solution is I'm the guy in charge now on offense. And I don't doubt that he's going to present some problems for us. I've already mentioned the quarterbacks in dual threat. He threw for 61% last year. Uh, he ended up starting in eight games, playing in 10. He also ran for 300 plus yards. So he does have the capacity to extend plays. And uh, I'm sure we're going to think twice about about deploying to play pass and spread formations, realizing that he might be a very above-average runner. So that will be a little bit of a dilemma for us on Saturday. What do we do? Do we defend run or defend pass? Um, Blake Anderson's a good coach. He is, he is a very capable coach. Incidentally, you'll find this Anderson. This will bring a smile to your face. Corey, I, I would almost fell out of my chair when I read this. Coach Anderson played and graduated from high school in a little town called Hubbard in Texas. That's 23 miles away from my hometown. And, yes, as a high school kid, I played against the Hubbard Jaguars. That's one thing our coach, that, that that coach has in common with me. He grew up in a small town in Texas, but he's had a good coaching career. And I'm sure he would tell you he's not nearly, nearly done with what he's going to do. So he's got an impressive resume. Getting back to the game itself, looking at the stats a year ago, Corey, uh, talking about how we match up against them with our offense. Their defense is suspect. They, they've given up any number of rushing yards. They gave up 194 a game last year. They only rushed for 159. I think a good goal for us would be to outrush them by 100 yards on Saturday. I don't know if we can do it, but if we don't outrush them by at least 50 yards, shame on us because their schedule last year, the opponent outrushed them by 35 yards a game, and we're certainly better than the average opponent they saw a year ago. Uh, turnover margin is another factor. They were, they're were they 
They were nine on turnovers versus their opponents last year. They threw 21 picks compared uh, to the opponents only throwing 11 picks. So the differential on turnovers was primarily because of interceptions. The bad news for us, uh, the other quarterback or quarterbacks apparently were a little more turnover uh, turnover guilty than the, re- the returning starter. Number five, Cooper Legas, I think it's pronounced. Uh, he threw 11 TDs. He had 10 interceptions. So he protected the ball a little bit better than the other. His interceptions, of course, were all eight of us. So I'm sure they're going to try to protect the ball against us. Uh, everybody tries to protect the ball against us. We're good at winning on turnovers. I'll be very disappointed if we don't, if we're not at least plus one, if not plus two on turnovers. I'll be very disappointed if we don't outrush them by at least 50 yards. That alone should give us um, give us a good chance to have a convincing win on Saturday. Not to mention a Kenny crowd of 70,000. I think that might help out a little bit too. Incidentally, Corey, you might not be aware, a year ago this Saturday, on September 3rd, they played at Alabama. The final was 55 to nothing. I, I remember that. I remember but that. A few, a few weeks later, they went to BYU and played them tough. So I think they, they were maybe in awe of, Ohio, of um, Alabama. I'm not sh- sure that they're going to be quite as much in awe of us as number five Alabama last year, number five at the time. Don, you're, you're, at, you're at every season opener. Um, I haven't been at a season opener since 20 – boy, I don't think I've been at a season opener since 2017 against Wyoming. Yep. Like, ni- if it's 93, I've been at hot games in September, don't get me wrong, but I'm just curious, where does that rank for you? Is it normally that hot? That's above average temperature, no doubt. <laughs> I I don't like that. I, that, that, that. It doesn't sound good. You know, I'm afraid uh, – I know my wife's already warned me if the heat gets to me – then I hope you're prepared for me to go back to the car and drive it home, and I'll pick you up after the game. Incidentally, Corey, we have that same uh, wonderful gesture on the part of friends of ours that are going to allow us to park in their driveway not too far from the stadium. That's going to give me a chance to start the post-game show without any difficulty at all an hour after the game, just as we did a year ago. I come to this time every year, Don, and I'm like, it doesn't feel like – it's week one. It just, it just does not feel like it. Do you get that same thing? You coach them. You you have almost lived and lived and breathed the game of football for a, a game of college football for such a long time. Do you get where I'm coming from when I say it almost doesn't feel like we're here? The only reason you feel that way, Corey, is you didn't go through fall camp. If you've been <laughs> out there practicing every day, I promise you those players are ready to play against someone else. Fair enough. Other than, other than themselves. Yeah. So I'm. Um, you know, good teams, obviously, we don't know for sure what we're going to see. Incidentally, they do have a, a new defensive coordinator also. So we might get surprised by alignments. Um, it's just guesswork as to how they're going to line up. I'm sure we don't know for sure what we're going to get. But we'll adjust during the game. That's what good teams do. Um, and we'll we'll uh, adjust to a different play caller than last year if the head coach didn't call plays a year ago. It sounds like he didn't. Um, but the thing you know about good football teams – we have veteran coaches. Uh, they're going to do a good job of not beating themselves. Uh, 